Hello, welcome to my show. Who the hell am I? Well, if you don't know, you may have seen me in Spelling Bee or The Lion and the Wiz, or on the electric company watching TV with your kids. But if you saw Memphis, how could you forget this? The smile, the style, the fat, the blow. Welcome to the James Monroe Animal Heart Show. How am I doing? Pretty good? GMI fans, I told you it was going to happen. I said I was going to get a chair. I said I was going to get a table. Now, if I could just fix the set, everything will be fine. Look, don't worry about the fact that doors have to be locked or there's locker rooms or, you know, there's blenders that don't belong to me or even a water heater. What's, what's important right now, my wonderful JMI Ibohart fans, is the fact that my guest right now is the incomparable, amazing, original Memphis cast member, Brad Bass. Hi. How you doing, Brad? What's that? Good. This, your set is really just uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I told them that when I first started the show, I was going to be like, you know, Broadway's Jay Leno or, oh. or Broadway's, or, or even... My favorite, I would George Lopez, Arsenio you know. Hall. Oh, I mean, old news, old news, man. Now just, we, okay. we, we do things differently, and it's but, right. you know. But I still strive to be number one. Y'all need air conditioning on the, on the set, but oh, God. stop complaining. Clay Aiken. Oh God, Clay Aiken. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. there's so much to go here, ladies and gentlemen. In case you don't know, if you've seen our show, you have seen Brad Bass, and you may have seen him in many, many, many different capacities. He is one of the best dancers we have in our show. He's a great tumbler. He tries his best not to do it, and then sometimes we force him to do it. He also plays, um, actually, I'll let, I'll let Brad play. Uh, in our show, who do you play? Uh, I play Felicia Farrell, and <laughs> I also play uh, Bobby, the uh, janitor. Yeah, yeah, I knew this interview was going to be like this. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, you are Perry Como. I do that sometimes. Fantastically too. well. You are also... Um, Frank Dreyer. Frank Dreyer. He's Frank mm -hmm. Dreyer. And when when things go sometimes haywire, this lovely and amazing performer, and I kid you not, I say it with all honesty, is the understudy for Huey Calhoun. And let me tell you, this man right here, this man's voice is simply ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He's the type of guy that... I would go and take to a black church and let's sing and watch all the black people go, oh! this boy, this white boy got mad soul, mad soul. It's, it's just, it's kind of funny. So when you, when you, if you ever find out, look on his Facebook and if he says, I'm on for you, come. It will be a religious experience. <laughs> told me that I sing too black. <laughs> so. He can't help it. He can't help it. But we're going we're, we're to get into that. Brad. You have done many things on Broadway. Uh, you're now in our show, and you've been with our show from the beginning in La Jolla. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go back a little further. Why am I nervous? I don't know why. We're no, friends. I know. Well, that, this is like, <laughs> I guess it's your new set. I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Yeah, no, All trust right. me. You, you can't mess up this set. Ooh, it's the main yes. drain oh. here. So you can't mess it up. Um, my first question to you is, how did this all start? I mean, you, where, are you, where are you from? I'm from uh, the county part of the city of Danville, Virginia, and the county is called... Where I'm from, Ringgold, like a ring of gold. So Ringgold, Virginia. That's yes, from. Ringgold, Virginia. And I'm gonna take. I'm taking us to South. Yes, it is. It's right on the North Carolina line. I was raised on a tobacco farm, and uh, <laughs> so played you the creek every day. I mean, I had nothing else to do. Now, was it the creek or the crick? Oh, we don't do the crick. No, the creek is more Tennessee, where they say like not and ass. Mm -hmm. We say the creek. The creek. So we pond have... and the creek. All right. So as a child, you have your brothers and sisters. Two older sisters. So it's you guys are out on a tobacco farm, and in Ringgold, Virginia, how in God's name did you all of a sudden begin dancing and singing and acting the way you do? Well, I've always danced in my bedroom. And I still do. <laughs> That's the truth. I don't know. I grew up singing in church. Like, ah, okay. That explains a lot. Yeah. There was white folk there, though, but I don't but know. But it's the South, though. That's different. The white yeah. folks are different in the South. Um, I grew up singing Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. You go to church three times a week. In the South. That's true. I understand because my family's from the South and so we had to do that as well. So you go to church uh, three times a week, you sing and you pray and have a great time. When is it, when in your childhood do you go, hey, um, I think I want to do this for a living? I didn't, I never really thought I could. I mean, I never really 
I don't know where I should look. I'm no. going to do both. Give you audience a view and you view as well. Yeah, thank you. Lean okay. against the prop here. Yes, the prop. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I never, I thought, I always knew I could sing, but I never thought I would be a singer. Mm. I wanted to design roller coasters, and then <laughs> I realized I had to, like, be a really good, like, mathematician and stuff, and I was yeah. like, hell no, no. <laughs> um, I saw my first Broadway show when I was 13. Did it come to town, or you went to No, it? I was playing the trumpet in my high school band. Okay. In eighth grade, because our high school goes from eight to 12. Mm. For spring break, we were going to New York, and... I didn't even want to go because I was afraid I was going to get mugged and it was going to be nasty. <laughs> but I went and I didn't know what we were seeing, but I knew we were seeing something on Broadway, but I didn't know what that meant. I mean, I knew what plays were, but I didn't know Broadway was plays. Yeah. And I thought we were seeing, I, so many people have heard this story now, but I thought we were seeing a <laughs> French movie called Les Miserables. <laughs> and um, I didn't even know it was French, I don't think. But Wait, hold up, stop, stop. Please say that again. Les Miserables. <laughs> I was 13. And I remember we had to get dressed up to go see this movie, and you sat down in this fancy theater, and they gave you a book to see this movie, The Playbill. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is stupid. I'm wasting all my time doing this stupid movie. <laughs> and you know, the scrim is in the front for Les Mis, right, you right. see that Cosette, you know, the, the sign of Les Mis. And I was like, all right, stupid French movie. I hope they have subtitles. And it went up, and people came out. And I was like, frickin' opera. I hate opera. You can't understand what they're saying. But then you could. And then it was an opera. And it was pretty badass, and I just kind of was captivated. Really? I had no clue what the hell was going on. I don't know. I mean, it's an amazing show, but really, though, a lot of the times, how do you, how do you figure all that out? Well, I have now. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But I loved it, and it changed my life. And I saw someone in it, Sarah Uriarty Berry. Mm -hmm. She played Eponine that night when I was 13, and I became obsessed with her. Her performance was incredible. And I just started a theater company in Daytona Beach. Okay. And we did a benefit on Monday night, and Sarah Uriarty Berry came down and sang on my own at my benefit Monday night, and I cried like a baby the entire time. So talk about crazy? bringing it full circle. You mean to actually see someone on Broadway, and then many many years later, now I'm friends to, with her. You know, to be friends with these yeah. people—that's amazing. So you see the show, you go back to Ringgold, and do and I get the CDs. So you get the CD. I got. I bought the CDs and <laughs> I listened to it and I memorized every word. Right. Um, I played every part. Eponine was my favorite. Shocking. Really? Because um, <laughs> of course I'm always, you know, oh six oh one, and you're like. Oh, well, then I couldn't sing that when I was thirteen. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't do it. But Eponine, I could sing. Right. And act. I wanted to fall in love with Marius. Of course. You um, and Eponine. probably probably still do. But that's beside the point. Um, so, so yeah, so I that out. No, we won't. No, I, uh, <laughs> I just fell in love with the show, and then I bought Phantom of the Opera because that was the other big one I had heard about, and I hated it. Really, Andrew Lloyd Webber? Though I love your other work, I really do. Yeah, but you didn't like Phantom. But I loved da 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 da, and no, the rest no. of it was like a letter. He sent us a letter, here we are, and we are around with you in a letter, another letter, a letter, why is he angry? I was like, I, I, oh, I, will, say that. I will say this, like, I've seen the show a couple times, and I just saw it on Broadway, I saw it in San Francisco when I was... I saw there. it in La Jolla when we were there. Really? Because I saw it, I saw it in Los Angeles when, when, when I was in high school, I saw it in San Francisco when I was in college, and then I finally I saw it. I took my niece to see it in San Francisco yeah. a year ago, and then I came, and when I was, on a Monday, my wife and I went to go see it, and I... I love every part of the show except, which is crazy, except for the letter scene. I'm like, ah! He's in the letter. He is in the dungeon. Please don't get me wrong. I don't think we're writing in saying James Agar hates Phantom. No, I love Phantom. It's just that scene. Well, I don't like it. No offense, folks. But I love Andrew Lloyd Webber. I'm a Sunset Boulevard fan. Right on his face. And I like Jesus Christ Superstar and Evita. That one too. I'll even do a little Cats. I bet you would. I can sing Jellicle songs for Jellicle Cats. Right. The entire thing right now. Okay, give me, give me, give me a little bit of Jellicle Cats. Practical cats, romantical cats. Oh, wait, wait, I gotta go back. Wait. Yeah, go back. Um, <laughs> uh, We're gonna pause for this. Uh